Welcome back. Let's continue the discussion about the machine learning project workflow. In the previous video, we talked about the first phase, which is all about the data. Now, let's explore the next phase, which is all about the actual machine learning model and its evaluation. But before moving further, I have a request. If you are enjoying my videos, please do subscribe. Hit the like button and post your questions, suggestions, and queries in the comments section below. Now, let's come back. The core of the machine learning workflow is the phase of writing and executing machine learning algorithms to obtain an ML model. The model building phase includes a number of steps that lead to a final model. The first step under this phase of our workflow is choosing a model. There are many models that researchers and data scientists have created over the years. Some are very well suited for image data, others for sequences, some for numerical data, others for text-based data. Training a model means providing the machine learning algorithm along with the training data. But before that, we have to choose that algorithm to be trained with our data. The next step under this stage is model training. After we have pre-processed the collected data and split it into three subsets, we can proceed with model training. This process entails feeding the algorithm with training data. An algorithm will process data and output a model that is able to find a target value, which is actually an answer you want to get with predictive analysis. The purpose of model training is to develop a model. So there's we have three commonly used model training styles, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. The choice of each style depends on whether you must forecast specific attributes, group data objects by similarities, or you want to learn through delayed feedback by interacting with the environment. Let's try to expand this discussion to understand each of them a bit deeper. Supervised learning is the most popular paradigm for machine learning. It is the easiest to understand and the simplest to implement. Given data in the form of examples with labels, we can feed a machine learning algorithm these example label pairs one by one, allowing the algorithm to predict the label for each example and giving it feedback as to whether it predicted the right answer or not. Over time, the algorithm will learn to approximate the exact nature of the relationship between examples and their labels. When fully trained, the supervised learning algorithm will be able to observe a new, never-before-seen example and predict a good label for it. Let's try to understand it with the help of an example. Just look at this diagram. In this case, the model tries to figure out whether the data is an apple or another fruit. Once the model has been trained well, it will identify that the data is an apple and give the desired response. Linear regression, logistic regression, k nearest neighbors, and random forest are examples of algorithms currently being used for supervised learning. Unsupervised learning describes a class of problems that involves using a model to describe or extract relationships in data. Compared to supervised learning, unsupervised learning operates upon only the input data without outputs or target variables, which we call labels. As such, unsupervised learning doesn't have a teacher correcting the model, as in the case of supervised learning. What makes unsupervised learning such an interesting area is that an overwhelming majority of data in this world is unlabeled. Having intelligent algorithms that can take over terabytes and terabytes of unlabeled data and make sense of it is a huge source of potential profit for many industries. K-means clustering, neural networks, principal component analyses are examples of algorithms commonly used for unsupervised learning. Reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning technique that enables an agent to learn in an interactive environment by trial and error using feedback from its own actions and experiences. The main element of a reinforcement learning system are the agent or the learner, the environment the agent interacts with, the policy that the agent follows to take actions, and the reward signal that the agent observes upon taking actions in the environment. 
Reinforcement learning can solve complex problems that cannot be tackled by other machine learning algorithms because it focuses on the problem as a whole, doesn't require a separate data collection step, and it operates in dynamic, uncertain environments. The next phase in our workflow is the model evaluation. With the model trained, it needs to be tested to see if it would operate well in real-world situations. That is why the part of the dataset created for evaluation is used to check the model's proficiency. This puts the model in a scenario where it encounters situations that were not a part of its training. Evaluation becomes highly important when it comes to commercial applications. Evaluation allows machine learning practitioners to check whether the goals they set out to achieve were met or not. If the results are not satisfying, then the prior steps need to be revisited so that the root cause behind the model's underperformance can be identified and subsequently rectified. There are several evaluation matrices like configure matrix, cross validation, and root mean square error, etc., are used for different kinds of problems. Great, we learned a lot in this video. We talked about choosing a machine learning algorithm to train with our own data. Then we talked about the model training, where we discussed different learning styles like supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. And finally, we briefly talked about the model's evaluation. That's it for now. We will dive deeper into these concepts practically in the later videos of this series. If you enjoyed the content, thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.